Are suicide attempts failed or successful? Are suicides committed or completed? In this video, we'll discuss the language we should use when talking about suicide and when language matters and when it doesn't. Also, at the end of this video, I'll share one important caveat with you. This is Speak the Unspeakable, a series focused on suicide prevention through the lens of lived experience. My name is Scott Tishmer. I am a suicide preventionist and a suicide attempt survivor. So when a person has attempted suicide and survived, they might feel a sense of failure. Some might even describe themselves as a failure, like, I couldn't even get this right. On the other hand, some might feel an immense sense of gratitude and just feel lucky to be alive, that they have a second chance on life. After my suicide attempt, I mostly just felt further shame and indifference. I can now say that my suicide attempt, luckily, was interrupted by first responders. Prior to my suicide attempt, I had already felt great shame. I felt like I didn't belong on this earth. I felt like I was a bad person. But after my attempt, when I came to, I immediately felt additional shame. It felt like I was caught, that I was not just a bad person, that now I was a bad person doing a bad thing. So these are just a few examples of how someone might feel after surviving a suicide attempt. When we talk about what language we should use, I'm not talking about how people should feel, nor am I talking about how people should describe their own experiences. But our language does matter, and how we talk about suicide can have a positive impact, or it can have a negative impact on important things like our ability to seek help when we're experiencing suicidal thoughts, or the ability to heal after a suicide attempt, or the likelihood of someone offering help to others as opposed to blaming or judging them for expressing suicidal thoughts or exhibiting suicidal behavior, or our ability to grieve the loss of a loved one that has died by suicide. So what words and phrases should we use? Let's start by defining a few terms. The CDC defines suicide as a death caused by injuring oneself with intent to die. A suicide attempt, on the other hand, is defined as harming oneself with any intent to end one's life, but not dying as the result of those actions. So when talking about deaths, we should simply use the term deaths by suicide or suicide deaths, and just say that a person has died by suicide. When talking about attempts, we should simply use the phrase suicide attempts, or say that a person attempted suicide. We want to avoid loaded language like phrases such as failed suicide attempt or successful suicide attempt. The adjectives failed or successful are value-laden terms, and in this case, they are completely unnecessary. Instead of failed, just say suicide attempt, or instead of successful, just say death by suicide. Another phrase to stay away from is the term committed suicide. In this case, the word commit suggests a connotation of criminality. When referring to suicidal thoughts or behaviors, we need to view individuals that they are likely in pain and distress and that they are deserving of our help, not deserving of judgment or punishment, which the term committed seems to imply. Another phrase that is also unnecessary is the term completed suicide. This phrase became more popular in usage as the push began to stop using the phrase committed suicide. I think this phrase caught on much in the same way that when I was growing up, uh, my mother would often refer to me as shot rather than Scott. You see, I have an older brother, Sean, so many times my mother, when calling for me, would start with the wrong name, realize it midway through, and self-correct with the resulting name of shot. So you can see how the first syllable of the word committed transitions quite nicely to self-correcting to completed. Nice try, suicide preventionists, but I see what you did there. While completed suicide might seem innocuous and certainly is more neutral than committed suicide, it is still not logistically sound. Ask yourself this, if a completed suicide means a death by suicide, what would be an incomplete suicide? We know that over 90% of individuals who have survived a suicide attempt do not later die by suicide, but go on to lead meaningful lives. So, does it make any sense to say that a survivor's suicide attempt is incomplete? That almost implies that you're then what? Waiting for us to finish the job? Again, the phrase completed suicide is not a big deal, but it just doesn't make logical sense. Now there are other phrases that are more frequently used by mental health clinicians that I would also recommend against using, such as suicidal gesture, suicidal threat, um, or parasuicide, but for this video, I'll just stick to the more popular language that we see in common discourse. One of the main focuses of Speak the Unspeakable is to highlight the huge importance of talking about suicide, but we must keep in mind that it's not just important that we talk about suicide, 
It's also extremely important how we talk about suicide. Now here's the one caveat that I mentioned earlier. If somebody is talking about their personal experiences of suicide, whether thoughts, attempts, or of loss, please do not correct that person's language. But if you are speaking about suicide, helping increase our collective understanding as a society, I want to first thank you. And I would also urge you to think very carefully about the language you use so that you're using language that empowers rather than language that might stigmatize or shame others. And again, thank you for speaking the unspeakable. If you like this video, comment, click subscribe, and give a like below. Take a deep breath, now let it out, roll your shoulders back, and hold your head up high.